Manufacturing a single case can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to design and develop, but the machinery used to make those cases costs millions of dollars. In a recent tour of Lian Li's case manufacturing facility in Taiwan, we got to see firsthand the advanced and largely autonomous hydraulic presses, laser cutters, automatic shaping machines, and other equipment used to make a case. Some of these tools apply hundreds of thousands of pounds of force to case paneling, upwards of 1 million newtons, and others will use high voltage equipment to spot weld pieces to aluminum paneling. Today, we're taking a walkthrough from the start to finish process of how a case is made. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High-End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high-quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dies. Thermal Grizzly also makes Conductonaut Liquid Metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. The first steps of case manufacturing at the Lian Li facility is to design the product. Once this process is done, CAD files go to the factory across the street, which Lian Li owns, to be turned into a case. In a simplified canonical view of the manufacturing process, the first step is again design, then raw materials and preparation of raw materials, followed by either a laser cutter for basic shapes or a press for tooled punch outs. Then, after that, there's washing, grinding, flattening, welding, and anodizing for aluminum paneling. Let's start with step one, the laser cutters and hydraulic presses. Lian Li uses a laser cutter for defining wide sweeping designs and shapes in thicker aluminum paneling. Examples might be rounded borders of maybe a 2mm thick piece of aluminum, cutting out panels from raw sheet metal, or even cutting the Bora fan aluminum borders that Lian Li makes, and these are also made on this very laser cutter in Taiwan. Lian Li's desk PC, as another example, is largely made on this laser cutter. The laser cutter is attached to a liquid nitrogen tank that's the size of a conversion van, used primarily to boost the cutting power of the laser for dense metals. The byproduct is some cooling of equipment for continuous use, but it's mostly a means for boosting the power. Each of these machines costs right around $1 million USD, but there's an ongoing maintenance cost for refilling the nitrogen tank. Lian Li uses approximately two full tanks of this size per month, requiring routine charges. Alternatively, and directly across from the laser cutter, case manufacturing can also use hydraulic presses for functionally stamping out the shapes in the panels. These presses are configured to punch holes in the case and in several locations simultaneously, making them significantly faster than a laser cutter for complex designs. An example of a design more suitable to a hydraulic press than the laser would be a mesh ventilated side panel. Mesh ventilation requires dozens of small holes. With a laser cutter, you'd have one laser cutting a full circle for each mesh hole, which would then exclude the unwanted metal for each individual hole. It'd take forever to do, and manufacturing costs would skyrocket as a result. Although fundamentally similar in concept, a hydraulic press makes the most sense here. These particular units cost approximately 1 million USD each, and Lian Li uses several of them to keep the factory operating efficiently. Just behind these machines is a large washing machine for cases. Case panels and other metal components, like drive sleds, need to be individually washed before progressing in production. This is because the previous machines all use lubricants, mostly oils, to keep the presses running, that lubricant can get onto the paneling, which would eventually be made a permanent blemish if allowed to continue without a wash. This giant washing machine uses a conveyor belt and a pressure washer. On the far end of the conveyor belt, a worker straps componentry, like drive sleds, down to the belt for washing. As it progresses through the washer, the parts get pressure washed by internal hosing, with a waterfall forming underneath to filter and recycle the water where possible. This reduces waste of the water and also reduces cost. At the other end of the line, the pieces are sped out into a container and then moved to the appropriate assembly area. The next machine is the grinder, which is a simple but interesting two-step process for finishing aluminum pieces. Several grindstones are positioned along this machine and are used for ridding of sharp imperfections on the panel edges. This smooths down the panel to perfection. A panel is fed in by workers, grinded down by the stones, and then fed out the other end. The workers then begin step two, where they restart the process, but use a non-woven cotton spool to create hairline brushes in the aluminum. The result is that ever-noticeable brushed aluminum faceplate. Water is used for lubricating this machine, and is recycled to reduce waste and cost. 
The machine goes through tens of tons of water per hour and does so at a relatively high pressure, as seen here by the skull and crossbones. Next, a panel can be taken to the automatic welding machine to arc weld the panel clips onto cases. These are an iconic Lian Li design and are socketable balls that clip into the chassis frame. In this example, Lian Li is manufacturing the N case N1 side panels, where each panel takes upwards of 30 seconds to outfit with just the mounting joints. It's no wonder the N1 is expensive when considering that the machine time carries significant cost. Every second spent on making something like an N1 panel is time that could be spent making a more mass volume case, and so that time must be paid for somewhere. For this machine, a small joint is first secured to the panel via impact, where a Leon Lee exclusive pin solution ensures security. Once impact hammered into place, the panel is ready to get zapped by the welder. It's a satisfying pop and a burst of light, but the end result is a secure mounting joint for side panels. The machine works autonomously but has personnel oversight. Each weld runs off of 300,000 volts, but we're told that it doesn't need much current to secure these pins to a flat side panel, and so has relatively low amperage. Once the panel exits the welder, the technician manually grinds down the edges of each ball joint to achieve smoothness, finally concluding with a double check versus a reference panel to ensure consistent production runs and quality. As for why Lian Li goes to such overkill to manufacture just a side panel mounting joint, we're told that the company's spec for connection cycles is 3,000, meaning that you should be able to remove or socket this panel 3,000 times prior to possible failure of a joint. In other words, if you re-socketed the side panel twice a day for four years, you might eventually encounter a weld joint failure. After this, the same technician can take the panel to another hydraulic press. This one is capable of exerting 1.1 million newtons of force and is used for the same punching process as described earlier, but it might be useful if a panel needs a second pass. Some panel designs require multiple passes to ensure structural integrity of the metal during manufacturing. A folding machine is also used nearby, deployed for exactly what its name indicates. Stamped or laser cut metal sheets are set nearby the folding machine and then can be fed into the machine to bend case paneling to spec. This is useful for unibody designs or for more traditional designs where something just needs to be bent. For the last part of this factory, a customized world's only thread boring solution exists near the exit and entrance. This final machine drills threaded and unthreaded holes into metal panels. The machine can drill up to an impressive 60 holes at once, but the drill bits have to be kept lubricated and cooled somehow. Rather than spraying solvent all over the bits as used in most machines, the Lian Li custom-made solution brilliantly allows the bits to drill into the panel, pass through it, and enter an oil tank for cooling and cleaning on each press. This allows for an efficient solution that doesn't require more moving parts and enables total customization of the panels made on this machinery. Next, we venture across the street to visit Lian Li's other factory. The second factory is back in the main office and is shared with designers, engineers, and executives. This factory is only in use 5 to 10 days per month, but Lian Li is hoping to ramp up production soon to put the factory into heavier use. The first machine in the factory is a flattener, almost like a giant rolling pin, and workers use this to feed sheets in to flatten, obviously. In the demonstration they gave us, a sheet of raw aluminum was used, but the machine typically works with punched out materials to counter the chance of multiple locations of applied force warping the metal. The flattener has a limitation of 3mm sheets, but this is plenty thick for the aluminum that Lian Li uses for their case design. Once flattened, the sheet is ready for anodizing and is near the end of the process. However, this factory also has several additional machines that we get to see before the flattener is ever used. One of these is another line of hydraulic presses, which were punching out drive sleds during our visit to the factory. The presses have motion sensors for safety and will stop instantly if they detect what might be hand movement nearby, but will otherwise operate largely autonomously from raw sheet metal to produce small components that get used in cases, like Again, drive sleds or PCIe slot covers. Unused raw materials can be recycled to reduce cost and waste. Lian Li has eight of these automatic shaping machines, as they call them, and an additional 11 SNC-110 presses with SNC-2-220 presses on the other side. The SNC presses jointly process 350 case components per hour, with 10 days worth of processing per month, and each press can apply 200 tons of pressure, some apply 250 tons of pressure, and they all work in two rounds or more of pressing. This line wasn't operational during our visit, but they typically work autonomously, press a sheet, and then use suction cups to automatically move the metal to the next machine for another round of pressing. 
Multiple rounds are used to increase the distribution of applied forces such that warps of the metal are less likely to occur, but if they do, the flattening machine can be used to fix that. Each of these machines has a tool. You've likely heard us talk about case tooling before, and this is where the cost really comes into play for cases. Tools are made often as one-offs or very limited runs using a CNC. One tool that we saw in particular was for the A75 case and costs upwards of $12,000 to make that particular tool that we were shown. This isn't even useful for the entire case, only for one specific panel. Typical tooling cost is $2,000 to $10,000 per tool, and each case needs multiple of them. An individual case can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. In the past, other companies have showed us cases that had tooling costs exceeding $600,000 USD, or even more in some cases. Raw material cost is only a few hundred dollars for these, but the CNC time is expensive. Every minute on the CNC, especially for multiple revisions, is time that could be used making a sellable product rather than something to make more products later. Lian Li's engineers spend about a month of revisions on the tools, which of course also has the cost, and that's not counting the initial design period. Tools are mounted to the underside of the hydraulic press machines and are used to stamp panels out, and despite being made of steel, these tools can still be fragile. The tools have to be grounded and static charges have to be removed prior to use, as a static charge can suck up the panels and break the tools. After all of this, Lian Li sends the panels upstairs for anodizing, assembly, and shipping, at which point consumers can buy the finished product. And that's how the cases are made in Lian Li's factory. This is all done in Taiwan, but additional facilities are being made in China, and of course, we've toured previous facilities like NZXT's in Shenzhen and the Inwin factory in Taoyuan. Subscribe for more as always, and remember to go to store.gamersnexus.net to backorder one of our anti-static mod mats, actually not used in the grounding process of making case components. We just ordered another round, so if you want one, pick it up there. Otherwise, visit patreon.com slash gamersnexus to support us directly in making more factory tour content like this, and we'll see you all next time.